I'm Mike Harrison, based out of Chicago. I handled in here up to Indianapolis, northern Indiana, northern Illinois, and Wisconsin, my territory. And I, I basically cover customers, uh, user customers, OEM customers, and distributors. Brian is from Round Rock, Texas, which is just outside of Austin. He's our application engineer for the Drives Group. And uh, he's also part of the tech support. We have a tech support line that we're talking about. Call for number. If you have any questions about Drives, call Brian. There's two Brian's and Steve. They're great. They love talking to people. So that's, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we've got some Drives we want to introduce you to, and I'll let Brian take over. And, uh, okay. Thanks, buddy. All right, Mike. Yes, I just wanted to say, yeah, my name is Brian Matt Cumber, Drive Application Engineer. I am on my 10th year at Tico Westinghouse. My background from prior to that, I was with Rockwell Automation, Reliance Electric. I had another 18 years there, so I've been in the world of drives for uh, quite a while here. So, um, and, and I've done everything from like systems to servos to simple drives and, and, and routes, and been out on site and seen a lot of happen. So that just gives you a little uh, idea of the experience, the application support I have. But what I'm, I'm going to talk about some new products and some, and we'll we'll then get into some existing product. But there is a new product that I really want to focus on today, and it's called the EQ7 drive. And one of the keys to it is it's going to be a product that one to a thousand horsepower. So if you want to drive to standardize on, and you have some needs and regardless of the side, you can go with this drive here. A couple of things this picture points out is that you've got a keypad on board that has an LED. This is an LCD screen, which happens to be displayed in a graphics mode that you can look at for like speed, amps, and torque. But you can also look at it and get data, read numbers off it, read information. So it's a pretty, pretty informative screen. So that's couple of things that I want to point out on this slide here. Uh, a couple of things about it. This is a new drive for us. We released it in February officially. Uh, we had another product very similar that you may or may not have experienced called the EQ5 drive. Uh, we are replacing that with this drive. It goes, it extends a little more in frequency, has a little few more uh, capabilities as far as software and hardware. Uh, anything that, you, if you did use EQ5, anything you had, any application you had for that would be, uh, would work with EQ7. We do have all ratings pretty in inventory. We do plan to stock them, so we don't have to have things built to order in two or three months. We plan to have units in stock for everything. And you'll have uh, inside the box itself, you would get a manual and a quick start guide, printed quick start guide, which is about a 25 page uh, document. So that would make things easier for you. And again, we can go anything from one to a thousand horsepower here. Specifically, we furthermore, we do what we call dual rating. Have you run into that before with drive products? I know we're not the only ones doing that. Well, we, put a rating for a constant torque or like a, uh, a higher torque application, starting torque, and then a variable torque. And largely variable torque, fortunately, is what a lot of fans and pumps work off of. That's, that's the type of application they are. So, so that's where we get the uh, units here. It does have some other capabilities, uh, the ability for dynamic torque control so that if you have a very hard starting load or let's say something that's higher inertia and you need that extra kick to get it moving, we can set that up that way. If you have applications that for some reason have feedback or you need some sort of, uh, some sort of high current response, we have, uh, we have modes that will solve that and those applications well. I don't believe that if you're doing things in like climate or temperature control, you're going to run into that very often. But, but we are, of course, with Tico Westinghouse, we are trying to look at the larger world of control of both industrial and commercial and climate. So that's part of where we're marketing this. But the important thing, the thing we think is a strong point on this drive is that we do have the combination LED an LCD key on the on the keypad itself. Plus, it's a removable keypad for remote mounting, 
And once you remote mount that keypad, you can put that in an EMA 4 environment because the inside of it where you mount is gasketed so that you can seal it, keep it sealed from water. Um, a couple of other features on the keypad. Uh, one is that there's a quick start menu on board. So that hits about the 15 to 20 important parameters for basic setup and get running. And that would be whether you want to operate remotely or locally, your maximum, minimum speeds, your acceleration, deceleration rates, uh, questions about the uh, applied motor you have with the drive. So we've got that capability. You can just step through parameter by parameter on board. This is actually a first for, uh, for us, so we're pretty happy. We're pretty pleased to have this type of thing. And also, the keypad itself can upload and download saved config stored configurations. So if you have four drives that all need to be configured the same way, you can do the first drive with a configuration and then they get a keypad and go down the line, drive to drive to drive, and just quickly download. That'll make life easier for faster setup. We also have the ability on the keypad to uh, take, if you have it set up and it's working, but you need to look at something and you want to take over local control, we have the one push button that does it for you. It allows you to just work on the keypad and keep an eye on things. And then once, once you're done with your testing or your diagnostics and you're happy, you can send it back over to the remote control the way that operating it. Yeah, one, more, one point I want to make out is the uh, the, the horsepower range from 230 to 460 volt, we have a stock off-the-shelf motor to complement up to 800 horsepower down to fractional. So if you need a motor, we can package up the motor with the drive, ship it as a package, and get a three-year warranty for the, for the customers. So they're pretty happy about that, 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 that option. So yes, sir. You got grounding rings on your motors. Do you guys supply grounding rings on your motors? Or you, are they special order, or do you? We yeah, have just standard stock, ship them. Ages, you put them, we can modify and put them on. We do that all the time. Uh, down the road later this year, and I think most manufacturers are going to do this, they're going to add it to all the motors as standard because of the way the drives are going in the future. But yes, we can add them, and it takes a couple days. And it's, it's no problem. But stock, if you, we do need to order them with grounding rings. We can get it out quickly. Yeah. yeah, you have to specify grounding rings. Yeah, so uh, ground 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 ground. Okay. And you're inside, you mount them inside? Yep. A couple of other things about this drive which might be important for certain user applications. Uh, we do have on the drive itself conformal coating on the boards, on the PC boards, and nickel and tin plated bus bars. This um, this gets important um, for the corrosion resistance, particularly in the case of sulfur and sulfur compounds in the air, and which you'll might find around wastewater applications. I don't know if you do anything around wastewater or water treatment areas, but if you have an environment that has the salt, the sulfate, the sulfur in the air, then this is uh, this is an advantage here, and it'll be a uh, it'll be a key feature when we go to promote it to our wastewater customers. <coughs> Uh, we've got a couple of other things, uh, dynamic braking transistors, and this is to uh, prevent the drive from, be, from the motor from overhauling and turning into a generator. Again, I don't think you're going to run into this very often in HVAC applications. The one exception is every now and then you have a supply fan and a return, an induced draft fan and a forced return fan, and sometimes one can overhaul the other. We've run into that. Do you ever run into that situation? Do you have supply air and return air? You've probably never seen, yeah, there's a potential there. So it's nice to know that you have something that will uh, respond to that. Something else that we're doing that it sounds like common sense, but it sounds like common sense we should be doing it all along, but when you go from one generation to drive to another, sometimes you pick up some of the old programming uh, habits as you go along because your customers are used to them and say, and say okay, yeah, we can transition here. But for this drive, we've taken the parameters just by their function. So basic parameters would be your maximum minimum speed, your how fast you want to accel or decel, 
how, whether you want to just uh, go to a